I love painting. Next to soap making, it's one of the few things I like to spend time on. I'm gonna switch mediums and see if I can recreate a famous 135 year old painting entirely in soap. Stick around because I eventually encounter some serious trouble. Let's go. I'm gonna start on my embed first because I want to give you a chance to guess what painting I'm gonna be covering. This Dutch painter was born in 1853 and he would later recollect that his youth was austere, cold, and sterile. As with all my embeds, I'm gonna be using melt and pour soap that I got from Voyager Soap and Candle. Normally I refrain from using white melt and pour because it dilutes color, but I think it'll actually work for us in this case. White paint is a staple for any artist, and our secret artist started painting in 1881 at the age of 28. Great news for anyone who thinks they're too old to pick up something new. I'm gonna chippity chop my melt and pour and carefully measure it out to 30 grams because my mold requires a bit of precision. Art isn't always precise though, and our secret artist preferred using bold, unnatural colors, beefy paint strokes, and symbolic qualities to convey his artistic vision. Those white chunks get thrown into the microwave, and once meltified, I'm going to toss in some buttercup yellow mica. This is a nice primary yellow, and is a color that was prominent in this artist's work. However, he didn't meet success in life, and lived mainly off of a diet of bread, coffee, and tobacco. That's gotta be good for the cut. I live off of a diet of instant ramen, diet coke, and occasionally a single potato, so I'm not too far off. I'm going to reinforce this yellow with a little super sparkle gold mica, which will promptly disappear into the pale yellow never to be seen again. Futility seemed to be a major driver in this artist's cynicism, and he likely suffered from bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, epilepsy, as well as severe depressive episodes to name a few. I wanted my yellow to be a bit punchier, so I sprinkled in some neon yellow electric slide powder, and off camera I added some rosy red mica. Speaking of rosy red, this artist was considered a red-headed madman by many townsfolk during his stay in Arles, France. Do you have any idea of who I'm talking about? Leave a comment below because I'm curious who you'd all guess. A red-headed artist. And no, it's not Ed Sheeran. I've got my embed mold superfluously reinforced with binder clips. This is a crescent-shaped column mold that I got from Voyager, although it's manufactured by Crafter's Choice. I use the binder clips because these things have a tendency to leak, and leaks are for plumbers, so I'm having none of that. Does the suspicious moon shape give you a hint? Did you guess already? The moon, the night sky. This artist associated his version of the afterlife with the night sky, writing that as one takes a train to travel on Earth, one meets death to travel to the stars. That's beautiful, I guess. <laughs> a bit morbid, but I'll take it. Now, I was lazy and waited a full day for the moon to solidify, but that's okay because the real thing took a lot of time too. Beforehand, I was a little frustrated that I couldn't get the color to look right, and oh, there will be a lot more frustration later. Don't worry. I actually really like the color now. It looks like cheese. I just need to trim off all the hairy bits with a box cutter. On the same topic, our secret artist trimmed his ear with a knife, and in May of 1889 committed himself to an insane asylum, which is the location where, one month later, Vincent van Gogh would create his magnum opus, The Starry Night. Let's break it down. The Starry Night depicts the view from Van Gogh's east-facing asylum window during early dawn. It's a landscape scene with a crescent moon, the distant Apulian mountains, cypresses, which were a staple of his paintings, the planet Venus, and an imaginary village. Time for the drawing board. I'm gonna go with a darkish green mound for the bottom layer, a dark blue for the Apulian mountains, a pot swirl of pale yellow and blue for the light of the earliest of dawns, and then a pot swirl of blue and a darker blue for the general night sky. Within all the layers is going to be the cypress, which I always thought was a weird tower in the original painting. <laughs> I only realized researching for this video that it's actually a wiggly cypress. It is what you make of it, I guess. And in the upper right hand corner will be that beautiful crescent moon column embed I made, and speckled throughout the night sky will be the stars. The top will essentially be a swirly twirly of abstract star shapes, as well as some blue and gold biodegradable glitter. Now for the fragrance, I wanted to imagine what Van Gogh might have smelled during his stay at this asylum, and I thought of two obvious aromas I would use, lilac and cypress. The former because lilacs were planted all around the asylum, and Van Gogh painted a few studies of them, and the latter because the Kai was obsessed with cypresses. I've also broken the soap down into two separate batches because of the nature of the fragrance oils I'm using. More on that in a bit. We've got a lot of colors to prepare so I'm wasting no time. Color 1 will have a half teaspoon of Poseidon Blue and a quarter teaspoon Onyx Mica. I'm just using some of my oil blend to disperse the colorant so there are no lumps. 
color two will have a quarter teaspoon brilliant blue and an eighth teaspoon onyx. Color three will just be a quarter teaspoon jungle green mica and that's it for the first batch. We're only going to be covering the hills and cypresses for the time being. I'm using six grams of dirt and 12 grams of lilac and blue, both from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Lilac is the villain here because according to reviews it's a big ricer and accelerator. I'm actually going to use that to my advantage because I need the batter to be pretty thick for these layers since I'm going to be sculpting them. A carefully measured 83 grams of skin ED liquid gets poured into my carefully measured 194 grams of skin slimy liquid and I'm going to blend with my coffee frother today for two reasons. One, I'm curious, and two, this is an extremely small batch of soap and I have zero control with Trace if I use a stick blender. It only took about a minute to become malicious milk consistency so I'll definitely be using my frother to blend in the future. In goes the two fragrances, I'm going to give it a whirl with my spatula just to see if it rice my batter and I was honestly surprised. The batter looks velvety smooth until 30 seconds later. Whoa, that accelerated. I am not exaggerating when I say it only took 30 seconds for my batter to become Jing's jelly, and that is quite honestly the quickest acceleration I've experienced. So I've got to throw all my colors together fast. First into the loaf is the foothills, which is that lovely dark aqua color. I'm going to quickly simulate a magnitude 1 earthquake, and then 30 more seconds and the rest of my batter turned into poison pudding with a weirdly applesauce positive texture. In goes my plain dark blue, and that gets layered on top of the foothills, then sculpted with my dinky cardboard cutout. To make room for the cypress, I'm excavating where I plan for it to go. I'm going to recycle that scooped batter with the rest of my poison pudding, as well as the jungle green to get my cypress batter. Now, had it not accelerated at the rate of the price of fruits and vegetables here in Canada, I would have modified the colors a bit, but at this point, I was committed to just getting something in the mold. I scooped the cypress batter into that trench I dug and piled some more on top. Unfortunately, the batter was too thick to obey my cardboard cutout. That's okay. I've been disappointed by soap many times before. So... I'm just gonna roll with it. Who knows, the roughly edges might look like the silhouette of a tree. Thank go that's over and done with. Next batch. I'm preparing a quarter teaspoon buttercup yellow with a quarter teaspoon titanium dioxide to get a nice pale yellow. I didn't want to contaminate the TD with my other colors, so I'm just throwing a quarter teaspoon into the next three colors. One of them gets an eighth teaspoon of brilliant blue, another gets one teaspoon of neon blue disco pants, these neons have the weirdest names, and the third gets a half teaspoon of brilliant blue and a quarter teaspoon black onyx. My last two colors get a tiddly bit of buttercup yellow, and then an eighth teaspoon of TD gets thrown into one, and an I don't know amount of rosy red gets thrown into the other. Lastly, I'm using 10 grams of Bamboo Cypress from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I never had a chance to discuss my previous fragrances with you, so I'll just sum them up now. Dirt smells like an aquarium, lilacs smell like flowers of summer's past, and Bamboo Cypress is a musky deodorant smell? <laughs> it's woody with a bit of manly, so think fast and the furious in the middle of the forest. Time for the mad science. I'm pouring the rest of my skin ED liquid into my skin slimy liquid, blendifying until it becomes malicious milk, and then adding my fragrance which hopefully won't pull a lilac. I sort of just didn't want to use another vessel, so I decided to pour the two colors into the mold separately on top of each other. The batter was calamity cream at this point, so it was quite loose, but the colors didn't blend as much as I would have liked. They were also a lot more saturated than I intended for them to be, but there was no point crying because I already did that. I'm now separating my batter to make the two night sky colors, and the batter is now becoming cursed custard, so the fragrance is accelerating slightly. Can I catch a break? No, I can't. I'm also going to separate the batter into the last of the two colors, which I'm going to use to attempt to make the stars. I'm going to pipe the yellow batter with a squeeze bottle because since stars are pinpricks, I sort of need to be precise. After my star cream is prepared, I hop over to the blues to assemble my sky. With all the utensils and measuring cups I'm using, this soap holds the record for the messiest soap I've ever prepared and so far it doesn't seem to be for a good reason. The sky will be a basic in the pot swirl with the lighter and darker blues that I prepared.
I made the sky fall onto my mountains and Cyprus, but only a little bit because I need to strategically space my stars. How I'm going to accomplish that is paint a line of pale yellow star batter, pipe the darker yellow star on top, and then sandwich it with another layer of pale yellow batter, topping it off with some more of that pot's world sky. Overly complicated? Yes. Did it pay off? No. Wait until the end. I fashioned a homemade hanger tool from cardboard, toothpicks, superglue, and floss because I wanted to swirl the pale yellow star batter a bit with the night sky to attain that painterly Van Gogh vibe. And this, people, is why soap materials cost a ton of money. And also why I'm not an engineer. I'm just gonna pretend it worked out and move on to layering the rest of my batter with the rest of my stars and, of course, that famous Van Gogh crescent moon. For the top of the soap, I'm using the last of my star batter to bestar my starry night, and then I'm going to swirl it with a toothpick to accomplish the task that my dinky little broken hanger tool should have completed. Lastly, I'm going to sprinkle some X-Large Turquoise Bio Glitter Sparkle from Voyager and Gold Stardust Biodegradable Glitter from the Good Glitter, except I'm going to run out of space on my SD card so there's no proof I actually did that. This starry night is going to sleep and saponify, and then it'll be ready to cut. Oh, I'm spent. I guess now is a good time to talk a little bit about Van Gogh, because his legacy cannot be understated. While he lived, there was a cultural shift in artistry due in part to the Industrial Revolution. Artists craved a new movement that would free them from the constraints of painting naturalistically, and Van Gogh was at the forefront of this shift. But like we learned earlier, he was plagued with mental instability, and this naturally took a toll on him. He found solace in painting, and was enchanted in particular by the countryside, finding it invigorating and healing, and from the countryside was born the Starry Night. But despite the painting's reputation today as one of the most respected and expensive works of art, Van Gogh played it off as a night study and gave it the cold shoulder, eventually calling it a failure. And one year later, it is believed that he shot himself in the chest with a revolver, his last words likely being, the sadness will last forever. Vincent Van Gogh was a victim of mental illness and severe depression, and he is the poster child for the trope of the tortured artist. His legacy, however, lives on, and his influence on art was, is, and likely will be paramount. His Starry Night gets all the love, but he was quite prolific, and each of his paintings carried their own weight. Here are a few of my favorites. The time has come to look at the product shots and discuss my bizarre replication of Van Gogh's painting. Is it the best soap I've ever made? No. Do I consider it a failure? Also no. All the elements are here. I mean, we have some obscure shape of a cypress. We have some hills. We have yellow dawn glow. I think the pot swirl for the sky was most successful. The elephant in the room is the color palette. Everything but the sky and the moon need their colors fixed. Editing Chris, can you give me a hand? I also really like the abstract swirly top because the blue and yellow really work well together. I call this soap Let It Go because all the other puns I could think of didn't make any sense. Even though it's not going to win an Oscar for the best original song, it still has a special place in my heart despite being a little troublemaker. The blended fragrances also really add something unique to this soap. It's one of the more realistic blend of fragrances that I've smelled in that it actually smells a bit like fresh dirt and not like an abstraction. <laughs> that was a soap journey with the Soap Universe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.